I'm Dave Sampson, Selectman from the Town of Sandwich. We're here today to give you a preview of the significant progress that we've made at 100 Route 6A. I'm here with Brian Schlegel, our Director of Facilities from the Town of Sandwich, as well as Tim Sawyer, who is the architect for this project. We know the project's been a long time in the making, but we're approaching the finish line. We're very excited to share this preview with you. We've had a number of challenges over the last couple of years, many of them attributed to the supply chain and, and other uh, labor issues associated with COVID-19. But as we approach uh, the final weeks and months of construction, uh, we wanted to let you know about the significant progress we made and give you a preview of what the new service experience will look like here at our new town hall. Okay, so Tim, uh, we come in here to the main entrance from what used to be the, the Santander Bank, or traditionally a long time ago, the Sandwich Cooperative Bank, for those of us that have been here the longest. What does the new service experience look like as you walk in the building? So really, the intent was you, you walk in and you're immediately presented with the service counters for all the departments that people most need to come to Town Hall for. So you've got building, health, natural resources, front and center, they have a lot of traffic. You've got town clerk, and then you've got financial over here. So the departments that people come to the most, front and center, easily accessible, as well as around the corner, we've got uh, public access computer stations. Excellent. Okay, so we're here in uh, what's really the finance uh, type area for the most part. So tax collector, uh, accounting. Assessor. Uh, assessor. Uh, and all those offices are located here, which would be off to your right when you first come into the building. Uh, being a former bank, we did have the opportunity to repurpose some of the assets here, especially those large vault units, uh, which will get you a peek inside of what those look like. Brian, what are some of the changes and upgrades that have taken place from an HVAC perspective? In this facility, we've, re we've replaced all of the HVAC systems, all the new heat pumps, all the duct work. Everything is brand new in here, so we'll have a, a really um, well-suited uh, HVAC system for occupancy, uh, comfort, HVAC, uh, I'm sorry, air quality, et cetera, in the building. Um, we've upgraded all of the plumbing systems and the electrical systems. So everything in the building is pretty much brand new except for the existing service. Everything from there out was all brand new. So the nice thing is though with the new HVAC system is we're gonna have a lot more comfort control in the building for all of the occupants and uh, increased uh, indoor air quality for them too. And that was one of the concerns. Um, so we really made strides on that. We've upgraded everything in the building that we could possibly take care of in here. So Right, with the ultimate goal being we're not coming back to touch this stuff in the near future, right? We haven't but, left anything behind that hasn't been taken care of. We gutted this building, and for those that had spent time here before, uh, you know that it looks completely different than it did previously. Absolutely, So yes. since we have really gutted it all the way back, we've taken this opportunity to replace everything that might need to be touched, upgraded, maintained, et cetera. That's correct. All the major systems have been upgraded so that, you know, it'll be a maintenance issue from this point forward. Now we can just maintain the facility as we need to. Excellent. So this is the former primary vault for the bank. You may have made your way in here to access safe deposit boxes. Now it will be used for uh, critical record storage that we are required to uh, keep safe and in a fireproof capacity. And I uh, probably heard something about these file cabinets at some point, which are really engineered so that we can get the most efficient use of the space uh, to maximize the storage. Side entrance to the building uh, is directly in front of where I'm standing right now, behind me being the building department, uh, health department, as well as natural resources. And Tim, you could probably comment a little bit about the space design. So this has really been engineered such that folks can do job sharing, cover areas for each other. Uh, we had a lot of compartmentalization under our former model, Correct. and we've pretty much done away with, I think, most all of that at this point. Right, so the area that we're in now, it's got several departments in it, but they're really set up so that the admin and uh, support staff for each department can help support each other. Um, so you've got admin stations out here, you've got offices that are in the back. So it's really more of a collaborative kind of setup so each department can help the other. Yep, and for those of you that may have been paying attention to some of the updates about the building, one of the primary areas that we're waiting for right now is the HVAC system to be completed. So you probably noticed that a majority of the ceiling tiles are out and that is directly related to that work. 
one of the things that we we're doing with this building is it's going to be fully accessible. Um, a lot of the other town facilities, um, just due to the fact that they're, they're old, um, it kind of evolved in the spaces. Um, they didn't always meet accessibility requirements. Um, this building is 100% accessible, and we made sure anything that wasn't when we got here is now. Right, and that includes uh, the elevator, of course, the entrances and exits, the counter heights, the restrooms, restrooms everything. Everything. So we have the, the town clerk's offices here, uh, obviously one of our highest traffic areas also, so it's part of this main lobby. A lot of folks coming in for census related issues, public records issues. So the town clerk's office is here with secure storage and a, a very big service area that's accessible right off the lobby. So Brian, uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about, and we've walked through here a couple times, you know I've asked about this one. Yes. Uh, what is the story with the, the wiring that we see around? So uh, we see wires on the wall, the lighting controllers and the ceiling. What does that all mean? So the wiring in the walls are going to be set up for um, all the video communication. So this actually can be a, a command center for the town manager, the assistant town manager. Um, they can communicate with the rest of the town. The building is on a, a full service generator. So what they, they're gonna set this up so that Bud is an emergency manager. In his office and here, we have the whole building wired so that they can actually be in each independent offices and provide whatever services they need to the town in case of any emergencies or even during Zoom meetings and calls of that nature. So what they did is they specifically put in a system for that uh, and we, we used the uh, ARPA funds for that actually um, so that we could have that access um, in the facility for future use. And then how do these lighting controls work that we see that are spread throughout? So the, these the are a combination of motion sensors and uh, lighting sensors. So what they'll do is with the ambient light, they'll dim down as needed to save energy. Um, they'll shut off after a certain predetermined amount of time if there's no use in the room. And really that's for that, they're nice, they're simple, but um, they're really economic for the building. They, they save a lot of energy. And the generator you mentioned is a, a very significant asset. So that That's generator huge, yeah. will power this entire facility in the event of any type of power. Issue. Absolutely. So when the bank had it, they actually put a generator and it will take the entire facility. So if we have any power outages, there'll be absolutely no uh, loss of power in the building. It'll handle every uh, system in this facility 100%. Right, and it's an automatic generator, it's diesel, and how big is the fuel tank capacity on that? Uh, this, has a, this has a 500 gallon tank. Um, it'll, it'll probably run for about 48 straight hours as needed. Um, this has a, a brand new transfer switch, as a matter of fact, to help pick up the facility. So I mean, all the infrastructure there is brand new. We were lucky because the generator only had four hours on it when we uh, took the building over. So I mean, it's literally a brand new generator. The thing runs like a top. That was Excellent. Really, yeah, and it's, we'll it's take a look at that electrical switching gear when we make our way Definitely. Down to the utility yes, room. Yes, absolutely. We have brand new women's and men's rooms in the facility on both levels. Sorry. Very significant. So, I mean, that's one of the biggest concerns in the facilities are the restrooms usually. So, everyone, they were very happy when they saw the brand new facilities. So, uh, they did a great job. The architect did a fantastic job in laying everything out. And the contractor really did a nice job on setting these up too, and really they, they, they did a great job with the finishes in there. So this is the, the office of the Board of Selectmen, town manager, and the assistant town manager, uh, where all that type of primary administrative work takes place. Unlike the other departments that have a service counter, uh, this department you actually come in, uh, there will be a receptionist, and you're helped inside the department. Yep, and, and we obviously had to overcome some, so we had some benefits from this being a bank previously, and we also had some challenges because this was a bank previously, and I think one of those challenges was the removal of the vault yes, in this in, area, because the there, there was a manager's vault in this space, which was encased in quite a bit of concrete, Ten I believe, inches right? Of reinforced concrete, yeah. yes. And it, it wasn't a vault in the sense that it had a vault door. Uh, it was kind of, it was a hardened room, technically. But um, as they got into it, it was much more substantial than anybody expected it to be. But we actually got great benefit from removing it. Absolutely. It took up quite a bit of space and prime spot in the building.
this is the town manager's office here, uh, room for the town manager's desk as well as a small conference area and it's directly connected with the assistant town manager's office as well. And then as you see all of these rooms and offices, uh, all of these HVAC units you see uh, along the sides of the room underneath the windows, those were all replaced as part of the work that Brian mentioned earlier. And within all the offices, we tried to keep them open and transparent. So you'll see uh, the doors, uh, which one is behind Brian. Yes. That's actually a glass door. It looks like it's painted wood and it's just got a film on it protecting it. But we tried to keep it open and visible and transparent as much as possible um, for people to see in, but also to let, allow natural light from the windows to get deeper into the space. The architects did a great job planning for the natural light passing through the facility. come in the building there are services in the lower level as well so those services would be accessible via either the elevator or the stairway here so uh, we have accounting resources downstairs uh, the planning department and engineering. Uh, engineering and IT are all located in the lower level as well as HR and there'll be wayfinding signage as soon as you enter directing you to what departments are in what locations so as soon as you come in you'll have a pretty good idea of where you're gonna go yeah, and I think the signage that's already up is a pretty key thing to see that, you know, very clear when you come in the building about where you need to go so that it's easy to navigate your way around. So we're, so we're in the lower level now. This is the, effectively the lower level lobby. Uh, so we have the planning and engineering departments here, uh, IT, accounting and HR in this direction, and then we also have a meeting space uh, back over here in the corner. So we'll take you on a tour and, and show you what we have down here on the lower level. So on the lower level here, we have uh, public bathrooms, uh, break room here, as well as a wellness room. And then there is a kitchenette and a larger meeting room back here. So this conference room is going to be really nice because it's set up with three monitors on the wall so no matter where you're sitting you can you can watch whatever type of program they're running or whatever Zoom meeting they're having and everybody doesn't have to like be facing one different direction. So they're going to have it set up so that we have uh, the multi um, uh, monitors on the wall and it's just a, it's a great feature. Um, they really took a lot of time and a lot of effort to, to make sure all this the infrastructure for that type of uh, Zoom conferencing, um, emergency management and things of that nature were taken care of. I think it also reflects a lot of the modernization that's occurred Absolutely. really as a result of the pandemic of, of technologies where we had to get up to par on. That really drove it. They really did drove it home. Yes, it did. So this is a file storage area. So here, this right? will be a, this is a storage area. It's for engineering for all of their records. They have all the blueprints and things of that nature. They did reduce a lot of them. And they, digi they digitized a lot, but there's still a lot they do maintain. So this will be a general storage area for that and for other purposes. And then also they, we have the vault in the back too with the um, storage system that was set up by um, Storage Solutions, I believe it was. Right, so, so we're basically we're behind the planning and engineering departments that is correct. Uh, at the moment. So that's where the storage area is. And then the vault that you see here uh, actually sits underneath the vault that's upstairs. So when they originally constructed this in the 70s, they would have excavated here and dropped this vault in and then the other vault on top of it or some version Correct. of that, right? Yes, they yeah. stacked. There's so these are the same, the same footprint for both vaults. Right, but this one has a very tall ceiling, which you'll notice that allows for extra storage. Even though the footprint was the same as upstairs, the space is a lot larger um, because of the height. So we're in the planning and engineering department. Um, there's a meeting room just across from the counter here, um, as well as a, a work room here for copying and things like that. And then there's some uh, office space along the back wall for the town planner, uh, assistant planner, assistant planner. And uh, you can see where the building has been, there's been some excavation completed outside to let that natural light in. So uh, even though we are in the lower level of the building, it really doesn't feel like we're in the lower level of the building. It's, it's very impressive uh, how that's been accomplished. Well, people were nervous you know, about coming down into a basement area until they saw that we have natural light for them. 
um, the way the, the architect had designed the, uh, the glazing to come through so they can pass through the natural light into the offices. They were pretty excited about that because there was, a, you know, they were nervous about it. You can't blame them to be in a basement. So, I mean, when they saw this, everyone really, they really loved the, the situation down here, the setup down here. So, yeah. so and we, I, we created two window wells. Um, this is the smaller of the two um, to get light into this department. And when we go to the other end of the building, you'll see the larger one that we can actually pass out into, and it becomes a courtyard. Right, which actually that, that came out incredible. So that's going to be a great thing to see. And the other piece, and, and I, I won't uh, kind of dodge it, but we did have some moisture issues down here last summer, uh, specifically because of the lack of HVAC service and also some areas of the, the foundation that were identified that needed additional sealing. So we've addressed all of those issues. Uh, we've taken the extra time to do it. And as part of the HVAC implementation, uh, we'll be adding some extra dehumidification components to make sure that those issues do not occur in the future. That is correct, yes. So this would be the mechanical space. Uh, I know we've done a number of upgrades here. Uh, pumps, motors, air handlers. Air handlers. Sorry. Mr. HVAC. <laughs> Mr. So, so, so Brian, I think it's important to note, it, note that as part of this project, um, you've really served as the project manager because you have that qualification. So. Yeah, so we didn't have to pay for an exterior OPM. Um, I'm MCPO certified. I've been doing this for 30 years, so when they hired me, this was going to be one of the expectations that we would manage this job in-house. Um, it's really worked out well for myself and the town. It's a learning experience for everybody. But we made sure um, in these facilities, as they were speaking, these are all brand new heat pumps, all new brand new ductwork, all new controls for the, for the occupants in here. Um, it's an extremely efficient system. It's, uh, it's a water sourced heat pump system. So they have a heat pump internally and what they'll do is they'll circulate water either through a cooling tower outside or through a boiler system. And what that does is that adds additional um, efficiency to the system. So what they'll do is each zone, um, each one of these units that you see behind us here will pick up a certain zone in the facility um, and it'll control each zone independently so they have better occupant control in the areas. What they did, they brand new hot water systems in the building, electronic mixing valves for the hot water systems and what that does, that saves both energy and it keeps water from like getting too high or too low in temperature. Um, electronic mixing valves are fantastic because they reduce maintenance. Um, they actually last a lot longer than mechanical mixing valves. So we made sure that we, we tried to put you know, the uh, quality equipment into the facility because we, we're looking to make, main sh make sure that this is maintained for about 50 years of lifespan. So the equipment we put in, we tried to, to make sure that everything we put in was um, adequate for that. So, yeah, so in here, um, we stripped off all the insulation. We, do you, we did utilize the existing boilers because they're only five years old. Um, so this here, it's, it's kind of funny, it's a large facility. These these boilers will handle this facility because of the heat pump system. So they work in unison. It's a very efficient system for this type of building. And we are adding a dehumidification in also, as David mentioned. Um, what that'll do is keep the humidity level at a nice even uh, set point down here. Because in a basement, you tend to get higher humidity levels just because it stays cooler naturally in the lower levels. So we had to offset that by putting a dehumidification system in to keep people comfortable. Okay, so as we come downstairs and turn left, uh, that brings us to IT, HR, accounting, and some additional mechanical areas. So we'll go take a look at that. So in here will be the IT director's office. This will be the assistant IT director here. And there we have the, the IT closet. That's where all the uh, network equipment will be located. So originally the equipment was gonna be in the IT office, but we utilized this closet specifically for that. Now it'll have its own small independent HVAC system so that we don't have to run any of the major systems to try to keep the uh, components cooled down. So that was, a, that was a really great benefit. We didn't think of it until we came down one day and the IT director looked at it and said, hey, can we utilize this space? And we're like, absolutely, this would be a great spot for it. So, and it really worked out well because it's right in the middle of everything, so. So uh, down on this end of the lower level, uh, we have the HR offices here, uh, as well as some accounting offices and a work area. There's an additional vault down here in the electrical room, so we'll give you a look at that. Uh, also, the rear area uh, that was excavated to again let more natural light in is back here as well.
And this is the this is the accounting space here. So so I don't know if there's a lot more to. No, it's just no. going to be workspace here. They're going to have workstations on both sides. Um, one will be for my administrative assistant here. They'll have um, the uh, business office there. So the uh, town accountant will be there, and her support staff will be right in front of her. It'll be great. It's real. It's really. Uh, they really utilize the space well. I will say that Catalyst really did a great job with setting everything up, making sure that everybody had the space that they needed, and also that the workflow was really set up well. So. We're in the courtyard uh, directly behind the building. Uh, this is not a public entrance, uh, really an opportunity to create additional egress from the basement, as well as to allow natural light in. Exactly. It's also for, you know, the, the occupants to come out. We're going to have picnic tables out here for them to sit at. Uh, there'll be a grill out here and things like that, so they can come out, they can have lunch, they can relax out here. So we have a brand new fire alarm system for the entire facility. In addition to that, we have what they call a BDA. It's a bi-directional antenna system. That's for first responders and fire department personnel. What happens is um, this building is, it, it's surrounded with concrete and steel, so there's no radio signal out. So the bi-directional antenna actually takes their signal, amplifies it, so that if anybody is in here, they'll always have radio signal, so they can contact people down here. This is additional storage for the human resources and business department. Um, again, we have adequate storage. It's really nice to have storage in the facility. The, uh, the assistant town manager did a fantastic job setting up the storage solution for the building. Um, it, she really made sure that everything was set so that we'd have more than enough storage. Um, it was just, it's a fantastic system that she had set up in there. She did a great job with that. So just to close things up, uh, we hope you enjoyed the tour and, and learning a little bit more about uh, all the work that's gone on here. Uh, thanks to Tim for his great efforts uh, throughout the entire project from, from concept all the way to where we are now, we're still going, and Brian for really taking the lead on managing the project. And there's a lot of other folks that have spent a l so much time here, right? And it's it's the, the town manager, the assistant town manager, but also the folks from, from the DPW and other town departments that have Absolutely. contributed to this They've project. It's, it's really been a team effort. and. Unfortunately, we don't have an exact date yet, but uh, we're all very anxious to, to get the HVAC items here wrapped up, any additional punch list items, uh, get everybody consolidated down here so that we can start moving towards the liquidation of those other buildings later this year. And I also want to take, thank uh, our friends at Sandwich Community Television for filming us today and taking us all on this tour. Um, if you do have any questions about this project or about the building, I'd be more than happy to answer them, or you can always reach out to the Selectman's office at Town Hall.